Intelligent design, or ID, is the attempt by creationists to give scientific legitimacy to creationism so that it can be taught in science classes as an alternative to godless evolutionary theory. The idea is that some biological features are irreducibly complex, meaning they had to have been created fully functional because if you remove any single component, the entire feature ceases to function. Therefore, the feature could not have evolved from a simpler state. The problem is that this is an argument from ignorance fallacy, since it's basically stating that not knowing how something may have evolved naturally is evidence for a creator. The only correct answer for not knowing something is, I don't know, not God did it. This means intelligent design isn't scientific, but that didn't stop ID proponents from trying to get it taught in science classes. In 1999, after many years of failed attempts to have intelligent design accepted as a credible scientific theory, the Discovery Institute, which is the leading intelligent design organization, produced its WEDGE document, describing their plan to see intelligent design accepted as a valid alternative to evolutionary theory. In 2005, the Kitzmiller v. Dover trial tested whether teaching intelligent design in schools is constitutional. The ID proponents failed to make their case because they were unable to provide any credible scientific evidence to support their claim. Additionally, the star witness for the defense, Michael Behe, admitted that ID proponents have never conducted even a single experiment that refutes evolution. Here is the transcript of an exchange between the lawyer for the plaintiffs, Eric J. Rothschild, and Michael Behe. Rothschild. Now, you have never argued for intelligent design in a peer-reviewed scientific journal, correct? Behe. No, I argued for it in my book. Not in a peer-reviewed scientific journal? That's correct. And, in fact, there are no peer-reviewed articles by anyone advocating for intelligent design supported by pertinent experiments or calculations which provide detailed, rigorous accounts of how intelligent design of any biological system occurred. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. And it is, in fact, the case that in Darwin's black box, you didn't report any new data or original research? I did not do so. Michael Behe even admitted that he redefined the word theory so that he could claim intelligent design is a scientific theory. He also admitted that intelligent design is no more valid than astrology. Here is the transcript of the exchange. Rothschild. Now, you claim that intelligent design is a scientific theory. Behe. Yes. But when you call it a scientific theory, you're not defining that term the same way that the National Academy of Sciences does. Yes, that is correct. You don't always see eye to eye with the National Academy? Sometimes not. And the definition by the National Academy, as I think you testified, is a well-substantiated explanation of some aspect of the natural world that can incorporate facts, laws, inferences, and tested hypotheses, correct? Yes. Using that definition, you agree intelligent design is not a scientific theory, correct? Well, as I think I made clear in my deposition, I'm a little bit of two minds of that. I, in fact, do think that intelligent design is well substantiated for some of the reasons that I made clear during my testimony. But again, when you say well substantiated, sometimes a person would think that there must be a large number of people then who would agree with that. And so, frankly, I, like I said, I am of two minds of that. And actually, you said at your deposition, I don't think intelligent design falls under this definition, correct? Yeah. But you are clear, under your definition, the definition that sweeps in intelligent design, astrology is also a scientific theory, correct? Yes, that's correct. At several points during the trial, all the witnesses for the defense admitted there are mountains of scientific support for evolution, and that there is no objective, independent evidence against evolution. Judge John E. Jones III, a conservative Republican appointed by George W. Bush, by the way, declared that the overwhelming evidence at trial established that ID is a religious view, a mere relabeling of creationism and not a scientific theory. ID is not supported by any peer-reviewed research, data, or publications. The Discovery Institute's Wedge document had claimed that without solid scholarship, research, and argument, 
the project would be just another attempt to indoctrinate instead of persuade. By their own standard, their intelligent design project was a failure, and just another attempt to indoctrinate instead of persuade. After the Kitzmiller v. Dover trial, the Discovery Institute lost almost all relevance. Another ID proponent, William Dembski, claimed he could mathematically demonstrate that one can reasonably infer something was designed by an intelligence rather than occurred naturally. However, scientists pointed out a number of mistakes he made that invalidated his claim. His formula contained errors that rendered the formula useless for his intent. He also misused terms and used calculations that ignore the mechanisms natural selection uses to increase information. He ignored the fact that extremely long odds become highly probable given enough time and trials, which is exactly what evolution has had. We can demonstrate how the basic building blocks of life can develop and become increasingly complex through completely natural processes. And we can demonstrate how life can become increasingly complex on its own, both in nature and in artificial life simulations, through mutation, chromosome doubling, etc. Despite many decades of work and a great amount of funding, the peer-reviewed scientific output from intelligent design proponents is almost non-existent. There are more peer-reviewed papers on evolutionary biology published every week than in the entire history of intelligent design peer-reviewed scientific articles. And only one ID article shows any original research. Finally, ID proponents often claim intelligent design has nothing to do with creationism, as a way to distance themselves from religion and appear more scientific. However, the primary textbook for intelligent design, called Of Pandas and People, was discovered to have originally been a creationism textbook. The ID version simply had all of the references to creationism replaced with intelligent design references. There's even a famous typo in the ID version where the word creationists was replaced by C-Design proponentsists, ironically providing an analogy for how evolution works. Thus, intelligent design has failed in both the scientific arena and the courts to demonstrate that it is scientific, or even that it is anything other than a rebranding of creationism.